In this video, I want to talk about alternative splicing and uh, different outcomes that we can get from regulation. Now, the main thing I want to focus on here um, is we've talked a lot about transcriptional regulation, and hopefully that's becoming natural. Uh, but I want to talk here about a, a, a very common form of post-transcriptional regulation. And so we're going to do this by discussing um, a single protein called NOVA. Uh, but let's start out by, um, by reminding ourselves what splicing looks like. So, so here we have a piece of DNA. Now this piece of DNA is being shown as boxes and lines. That doesn't mean, like if you looked at this DNA, you wouldn't notice any differences. This just, this goes C, C, T, T, A, C, T, G, C, T, T, G, C, and this goes G, C, A, T, T, G. They look exactly the same, the same chemical molecule. So we're just using boxes and lines as humans to differentiate these different regions. And what we mean by these different regions, we've indicated as boxes, the exons that after DNA transcription and splicing will be included in the final mRNA. Uh, which this mRNA will then undergo translation to make a protein. Okay, so the, the phenomenon of alternative splicing is when you have one of these exons that is sometimes present in the, um, in the mRNA and is sometimes not present. So this, this exon, we'd say, is alternatively spliced. And so what you, what you can see, if this, if this region is part of the region that's translated, um, is that there'll be a little chunk of protein, shown here in red, that is present in one form and not present in the other form. Um, sorry, there's something funny when ha happened with my slide, but it should be identical except for that this little piece of protein is missing. Okay, so um, this is an extremely frequent process. About 95% of human genes that have at least two exons uh, undergo alternative splicing. Um, and it's thought to be very important in a variety of processes, including in um, the, the human brain. So today we're going to talk about NOVA, which is a uh, tissue-specific splicing factor. So that means it's a splicing factor, something that um, influences alternative splicing. And it's tissue-specific. It's actually only found in the central nervous system. And so, um, uh, so it's, it's, it's required. So here we're looking at a, an instance in which the gene NOVA1 has been knocked out uh, in mice. And you can see this is a wild-type mice, and this is the knockout mice. So you can see quite a lot of developmental abnormalities. Okay, and so how does NOVA regulate splicing? Um, so what happens, so if this is our transcript, um, U1 and U2, these are just parts of the spliceosome. Don't worry about that too much. Um, so if this is the exon that's being regulated, NOVA is going to bind near the exon and basically influence how the region is spliced. Uh, and so, and, it, and it's just these motifs of YCAY, where Y is either a C or a T. So this could be TCA, T, or TCAY, I'm sorry, TCA. C or C, C, A, T, or any of the four combinations. So NOVA is going to bind to clusters of that. By N, we just mean a bunch of them. Uh, clusters of these little motifs. Um, and then it's going to influence splicing. So if, in this case, if it binds uh, just after, just downstream of the exon, it will increase the rate at which that exon is included. That is, it will increase the rate that the uh, transcript that includes the exon um, is produced. And it will, uh, it will re reduce the rate at which the transcript that does not include the exon will be produced. Um, on the other hand, um, if the this if in some other gene with some other exon, uh, this NOVA binding site is on top of the exon, it'll have the opposite effect. It's going to block the spliceosome coming in, and now suddenly uh, the transcript that includes the exon will be less frequent, and the one that excludes it will be more frequent. So. The important point here is that NOVA binds near the exon and influences splicing, and how it influences splicing depends on where it binds. And so people have done some really nice work basically showing regions, so if this is the exon that's alternatively spliced, uh, showing regions where binding uh, tends to increase exon inclusion. So if, if NOVA binds, uh, has a no binding site around here, or if it has a binding site around here, then that will increase the inclusion in this exon. Uh, and, and regions where um, NOVA binding tends to decrease inclusion in the exon, uh, on top of the exon, or in this region here. Okay, so how does, this, um, how does this actually have a biological impact? Well, NOVA targets um, a bunch of biologically coherent, what we can call a biologically coherent network, a bunch of genes that are involved in the same sorts of processes. In, in, partic in particular, the genesis of synapses and guidance of axons. So this is a bunch of uh, NOVA targets um, shown here at the cell surface. So this is cell surface between neurons. 
don't worry about this if you haven't taken neurobiology, but if you have, you might be interested to know that splicing is basically regulating the activity of this neural junction. Um, so in basically the way that this works is that most, many of the genes making these proteins are also expressed in other cell types, um, but NOVA, by binding it, these transcripts and influencing their splicing, um, it changes, it allows for neurospecific forms, neurospecific transcripts or neurospecific isoforms um, that lead to neurospecific protein, and we have differences in proteins uh, between the neurons in other tissues. Um, so let's just put this all together. So if in yellow we indicate the NOVA binding sites, and then these are the exons that are alternatively spliced. So if we're looking at ex exons in eight different genes here, um, so if we're in the central nervous system, then NOVA, the NOVA gene will be expressed, will be making NOVA proteins. Those will come to bind to these transcripts. And for some of them, I've colored, colored them red, that will lead to inclusion uh, in the exons being more, more likely to be included than they otherwise would be. And then for others, in blue, where NOVA binds on top of the exon, that will lead to exclusion of the exon. And so that in, this, in, in the central nervous system, we end up with these eight genes expressing these eight transcripts. Um, in other tissues, um, we will not have binding of NOVA. Sorry, we will not have expression of NOVA. So we'll have not, not have binding of NOVA proteins. And so the red exons will be less likely to be included, uh, and the blue exons will be more likely to be included. So what you can see here is expression of the NOVA, the, uh, expression of NOVA in the CNS specific way has allowed for differentiation from the same eight genes, but to make um, different proteins in different tissues. So the general points here, well, one is that we can call NOVA a master regulator. So, so far we've talked about um, uh, proteins that, and we've just talked about a single protein regulating uh, a single gene, um, but a, a common, um, a common phenomenon both at the transcriptional level and at this level of splicing is that you'll have a single protein that is a master regulator, reg regulates lots of genes. So here, NOVA regulates many different genes. Um, the second is that it's a tissue-specific regulator. This is a way to distinguish uh, what's happening in the central nervous system from what's happening in other tissues. This is another thing that happens very frequently. Um, and that finally, that the effects, of the, tar uh, the effects of NOVA binding on the target are conditional. Sometimes it will bind and it will increase inclusion of an exon. Sometimes it will bind and it will decrease inclusion of an exon. So um, let's point out here that uh, this is somewhat different than what we are accustomed to seeing. When we were discussing transcriptional regulation, um, we would basically say there was one option, which was we'd have transcription leading to RNA and, and protein, gene expression. And then the other option would be no or, or less transcription, that the, in, in which case we would produce less or, or no of the, the RNA and protein products. But here we're talking about something different. Right? With alternative splicing, um, we're talking about two options. One option is we splice it one way, uh, and that leads to some pre-mRNA. So, so we get some pre-mRNA, which gets spliced into some mRNA. Let's call it mRNA1, which gets translated into some protein, protein1. And then the other option is not no splicing, um, it's a different form, a way of splicing things, such that the same pre-mRNA gets spliced uh, into a different mature mRNA, uh, which then gets translated into a different protein. So whereas in transcription, basically the outcomes are either, uh, we either make a functional product or we make nothing. Alternative splicing, we either make one functional product or we make a, a different functional product with a different function. Um, so let's talk about a third kind of regulation. So this is a different kind of regulation of splicing. Uh, and so this is ribosomal protein coding genes. And, and so here I've sort of colored the exons green and, um, and this intron, which we'll see sometimes gets spliced, sometimes not as gray. So, so, so what that means then is this DNA gets transcribed uh, into our initial RNA, uh, and then it either gets spliced, this region gets removed, the single intron, or it gets unspliced, that should say spliced. Um, and so in this case, if the, if it, it, the uh, intron gets spliced, uh, then that will be translated into a protein. However, if it's not, um, the ribosome has a mechanism for recognizing unspliced transcripts, transcripts with interrupting sequence. And so actually it will degrade the transcript and will not translate it. Um, so then this is sort of a third form of regulation. So what should we call this? Uh, well, we could call it like on-off on splicing, where basically option one is that you splice and give rise to the product, 
And option two is you do not splice and you get the free mRNA, but you do not get a mature mRNA and you do not get a mature protein. So here we get basically either functional product or we get a piece of junk uh, RNA that will be degraded. So in summary, um, with alternative splicing, we have these splicing factors, and these are proteins that bind to mRNA transcripts and influence the splicing of those transcripts. Uh, we talked about NOVA being a CNS-specific splicing factor, um, and we noted that uh, splicing regulation can either give rise to two different functional proteins, or it can be a way of basically regulating how much functional protein uh, we get um, by either producing a translatable mRNA or a non-translatable mRNA.